All right. I think we can kick off now. Thank you all for showing up to this community call, enjoying the last minute tunes that was just happened to be on my Spotify. Um, and Amanda and I will be co-hosting tonight. Hi, Amanda. Hey, love the uh, song selection for tonight. Um, it's catchy. Yeah, big nice. week this week for us, eh? Let's yeah, go. Thing. <laughs> that thing that people have been bugging us about for months and months and months. Yeah, I just want to say, too, like, thank you to everyone in the community because I have not seen so much activity on our Twitter notifications in a really long time. Like, there were so many memes, tons of, like, promotion from you guys, and, like, you've really made such an impact because I've seen, like, accounts that i've never seen interact with across before like seem like they're finally mm -hmm. catching on and yeah your all of your hard work is proving to be fruitful because yeah a lot of more people have been talking about across now that we're yeah finally live on zk sync so thanks guys yes 100 percent. i've noticed that as well um you know heart was uh Hart was talking to me about how excited he is for zk sync and we were sort of evaluating the existing bridge space and you know across really is like obviously we think that it's the best technology but it's clearly undisputably um you know in the world class level right the top tier um but like we are basically the first proper bridge to go to zk sync to put it in you know at least in the terms of products that i would just to use um so it's exciting I'm excited to play around there myself and learn uh, from all these campaigns coming up, all the different campaigns. Maybe you want to um, chat a bit about that, Amanda? Yeah, if you guys haven't noticed, we have like a lot of announcements. It's going to be like a busy next couple of weeks uh, because of this uh, ZK Summer campaign that we have going on. And just to let you know that all of the AMAs have giveaways so if you join into the ama and if you're in the audience there is a chance for you to win one of the amazing prizes like yesterday we had like over 500 in prizes um so that was really good for the people who tuned in um so yeah we'll be announcing that tomorrow we did announce our campaign announcement winners i gotta say though guys like i was going through who to choose to win so many of you were not following Tahoe, which was one of the stipulations to be a part of like the winner circle. So thank you, of course, for following across. But in the future, please make sure that you're also following Tahoe because it is a joint campaign with them as well. Uh, so that is part of the requirements to be eligible to win the giveaways. And yeah, um, again, tons of prizes like today's AMA, which is like right after this community call is with uh, Z Kitties. I think you guys know them very well because I know uh, PBM is a great supporter of Z Kitties. So we've been talking about it a lot in our community chats. And that's a, a good one because they don't have any NFTs available for purchase anymore. But they have two uh, NFTs to give away today. So if you join our AMA, you could be one of the lucky winners. Woo. And Clay, well, do you know exactly when we're having, uh, I guess it's in Sesh, though. You guys can check it out. We're going to have like post AMA games. It's just for across Discord members. Uh, same as we did last time with the Arbitrum campaign, like crossword puzzle, word search, quiz, fill in the blanks, stuff like that, where you can win, you know, 50, 25, 100 ACX. So look out for that in the event calendar and be sure to be in the Discord so you can participate. Because I remember last year, or sorry, last campaign, those prizes went really, really fast. So you're going to want to be quick. Right on. Um, Ch Chase and Dylan, is it, am I remembering correctly that you have a, you have to, you have to jump at the 30 minute mark or was that just last previous time? Um, that's the proposed time. Gotcha. Cool. So I see it would be wise to put you on stage then. Okay. 
Welcome. I'm here, Welcome on, to I'm here on stage. Yep. Now do a thing. Now do a thing. <laughs> Yeah, so we've um, got lots get out of, your uh... stick and start poking Chase. <laughs> yeah, poke him and Dude, see if he does a thing. Dance, Chase, dance. <laughs> you don't want to see me dance, but no, uh, this is a super exciting week. Um, before we kind of talk about data stuff, Dylan and I have been playing with a little something that we think is pretty neat. We have one of the questions that we've like tried to ask a lot, kind of between us, like we argue about this on our like almost every morning. Like, how much more volume could we do if we had a little bit more capital? So we've been working on a little simulator where we can pretend that we have more LP capital and kind of process a bunch of the bridge transactions that we currently don't get um, and pretend like across was seeing all of these transactions. Um, so kind of keep an eye out. We made good progress on that this week, and we may have some fun things to say about that in the near future. That's very interesting. So you're sort of, you're able to kind of determine transactions that would have been likely to go through across had we had available liquidity. Yeah, that's very cool. I yeah. Like and even just like weird, like one of the questions was that I think one of the first things Dylan asked was like, when he joined the team was like, well, how much could we do? How much volume could we do if we did 50% of all bridge transactions? Let's suppose that 50% of all bridge transactions came to us. Could we support that? Um, and our answer was, we're not sure. And so we're kind of pushing towards some, that, uh, some of those numbers. The cool thing right is, on. like, the quality of the engineering team, like, there's tons of different levers that we can pull to, like, basically eke out further efficiency out of our current sort of system and resources. Um, so it's not like a be-all, end-all if we're not able to, like, capture more LP capital or, like, more relayer capital. There's a bunch of cool little tweaks we can do to how the protocol operates that should give us like much higher levels of capital efficiency. And like, yes. it's not like we're inefficient at the moment. Like we're already probably the most capitally efficient bridge out there. So it just kind of shows you the the quality you get back out of smart contract design. Um, and I mean smart smart contract design. Um, smart, but smart yeah, contract the guys design. are just top notch. <laughs> exactly. So anyway, you'll probably see some announcements every once in a while, or in the not so distant future as to some new things that we might be trying out in order to get us that like little bit of a hurdle. Because like you can imagine, that, like as we start adding more and more new chains, you want to be able to maximize the most we can get out of what resources we currently have. I actually put together like um, if anybody's actually interested in looking at that, Brit Brit might have already shared the link recently, but um, there's like a, an across protocol statistics Dune dashboard there um, and it's got some details on kind of like the number of like LPs we have in the protocol the like combined total value locked of, that's like staked in our different staking pools and then like the different bridge volumes we're doing next up on my list will probably be like adding in some of the stats on um, ZK Sync unfortunately Dune doesn't currently support them so I'm probably going to have to do some hackery in order to get that up there but it's 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 interesting just keeping an eye on that to see like how across is making use of its current resources and like where we could possibly go in the future with what we've got for any of you who are kind of more analytically inclined yeah so to kind of ea is asking some good questions so one of his questions was any key areas to target more capital i know we had previous conversations about kind of approaching dow treasuries for diversification um but he was curious where the risk labs team is focusing on getting more capital I think that's one of the ideas we want this to, uh, to help us with. We, so we want to know how much more capital we actually need, right? So like, actually, like, it's a bit of a waste if we attracted, you know, I don't know what number it is, but certainly if we attracted $5 billion of capital, there's not really $5 billion of bridge transactions. And so we don't want to attract capital that's not going to get used because that hurts all of our LPs. And so we're kind of toying, we're definitely playing with both. Um, we're trying to make the capital we have more efficient today. And we're trying to sort out how much more capital we actually want to attract, make sure that kind of everyone's capital is getting used as efficiently as possible. If you think of it, like in the traditional VSP, VC space, like when you actually um, like get an LP into your fund, 
they don't actually just like give you all their funds at the very start. They like you, you call down that capital as you actually need it. There isn't really that sort of a thing in DeFi nowadays, but like, wouldn't that be like a really cool sort of concept where like you could have LPs, like by like LPs, I mean limited partners, like say that they're they're in for I don't know a hundred million, and then like over time as your protocol grows and you hit your KPIs, you kind of say to them, okay, we're ready for our next tranche of twenty five million to be deposited into our liquidity pools, and like that could be a really healthy way to kind of scale the scale the protocol as and when needed whilst not kind of diluting existing liquidity pool APYs and like using the kind of resources of the protocol like in a kind of more balanced way. Sorry, that was a random side tangent, but yeah. <laughs> Very good. Um, how about the other question um, that Infinity asked, which is on ZK Sync, are there any early stats that are worth sharing? Are you able to share this uh, soon on from launch? We, uh, yeah, so the data team doesn't have as much visibility into what's happening on ZK Sync yet. So we have to add things to our data pipeline. Um, and the engineers were getting those things deployed. And so we're, uh, we're a little bit behind. I've got, I've got a little tab up on another screen where I'm trying to kind of compute this by hand, but I will uh, let you know whether I succeed or not by the end of the call. Yeah, Very good. I'd say our actual kind of like data pipeline stuff is obviously secondary to making sure the protocol is working properly. So the engineers will start slowly working on it over the next little while. But when we have kind of like material stats that we can share, um, we'll be sure to like put it in something like the Rangers chat um, for you guys to take a look at. And I'm sure um, Amanda and Clayton and Britt might be actually posting something on Twitter. So you, you'll, you'll know as soon as we know, basically. Um, but I'd be very, very impressed if Chase can manage to get something out before the end of this call, because I don't think I can, because I don't think the data exists. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds like a challenge. You better get on it, Chase. Um, very good. So, Amanda, as far as I know, we don't have a guest for tonight. Is that right? Or for today? Yeah, we do not. Um, I guess I can fill in for Brit's part of this call, which would be just to talk about the governance section of things. And I know that we have um, we have had the Arrakis team come on and do a bit of a debate in terms of which would be a better option for ACX liquidity, either using their Palm product on mainnet or using velodromes similar to what we did with balancer but bribing mechanisms to have acx liquidity on optimism and as you guys all know that proposal did pass but now we have an updated proposal from arrakis so really up to the community if you guys want to do both i'm, <laughs> I'm thinking about EA Sports, um, both GIF right now. But I'll post in the chat the, the link to the forum post from Arrakis. And they've given some updates. And then if you guys remember, Kevin, our treasurer, he already put a couple of uh, really interesting comments in there. So if you guys have any more questions for the Arrakis team, I think our... Yeah, just if you have any more questions, it'd be good to see some more activity in there and then see if you guys want to do both. Amanda, um, mm -hmm. isn't it fair to imagine, maybe, and anyone could answer this, but like, why would we do multiple at once? We wouldn't, right? We would wait for the first one to end, and then we'd consider changing. Do you think? Um, I don't know if that's necessarily true, because like, optimism, the optimism initiative is on. A different it's, it is on an l2 which provides just like a different resource to trade acx but i think for people who just want oh, to be able to correct. trade on mainnet gotcha yeah they like maybe that it'd still be interesting to maintain a good level of liquidity and a, a, yeah a good position still on, on mainnet even though like 
our community in general is probably like way more used to L2 uh, L2 swapping, but anywho, yeah, gotcha. just for different new investors, but yeah, I, I'm not sure. I, I know like it's a little bit polarizing. But, um, so yeah, let's talk about it more in the forum. <laughs> I, ho I hopped on stage to give Chase more time for his challenge, but Amanda, my question on the Arrakis proposal, I think you kind of caught out the big difference of it being main net liquidity versus optimism. On the last call regarding this, I thought Kevin called out potentially using like the ACX reward locking and like a uni V2 position. Are we as a community trying to evaluate that in addition to Arrakis or starting with uh, oh. Arrakis in addition to Velodrome? I think like, and everyone else on the team can chime in here, but I think one of the concerns was as well that like, in order to like Unis having a position on Uniswap V3 is extremely valuable. And that's something that is a pro of the Arrakis proposal. Mm -hmm. Of course, like in the cons are the management fees and I guess the, the total, the 1% fee as well. So TVL fee, I think is what they called it. Um, so keeping those in mind, it's like, yeah, why don't we just do something of our own on our own platform? But I guess the one concern would be like a bit more that's like preaching to the choir and not potentially reading me, sorry, reaching a new audience as much as sure. could be potentially reached with Uniswap V3. Yeah, just, that, just FYI, yeah. like we are. Like I'm, I'm not sure I can say this or not, but like we are definitely going to be adding the ability to stake a liquidity position in the protocol with Uniswap V3. The the issue is they don't issue you like a, an LP token back; they issue you yep. an NFT, so like you can't really deposit that. But like on on the liquidity pools that we currently use, which I think is Balancer is one of the main ones, like that they do issue you the token out. So like we will be able to lock that. So like that'll be running in tandem with the the bribes on uh on velodrome or like the proposal with arrakis as well like so like we're gonna i think we're going for a kind of like more like an experimental approach see what works um with like a bunch of like relatively low lift things that we can try out um i'm like yeah you, you remember when i was talking about this last time i was relatively bu bullish on the liquidity pool token locking um and like trying to earn like acx rewards through that because then you get like liquidity owned um, or sorry, protocol owned liquidity, but like that doesn't necessarily mean that it's going to work out that way in the end. But like, why yeah. not try a few different things, see what actually does stick? No, Dylan, I think that's helpful. I think it's hard from my perspective to give strong opinions on like future direction, other than I think mainnet liquidity is important and exploring the L2 space is beneficial. I think some folks convinced me more of that last time, but I think because of what you said, like we're kind of doing this like maybe broad approach and seeing what works well or what, you know, is the lowest cost or lowest downside options right now. It feels like we don't necessarily have like a cohesive streamlined strategy, which I think is okay, but I'm less inclined mm -hmm. then to like make, I, I don't know, have strong opinions on the Arrakis proposal other than like, yeah, it's worth a shot if there's not a big downside or expense associated is just from like um, Amanda's question you. to like, yeah, that was my only kind of opinion or commentary. It's like, yeah, let's try five of these things and then, reevaluate mm. as a community in a month or so how they're going based on the data yeah like yeah exactly i think and sharing the data openly with the community so that like we can come to a kind of conclusion together is probably going to be the best way forward like we're going to be evaluating it rather rigorously from our end as well but yeah cool yeah, just seeing so what sticks sense. i think it's the best kind of approach it's it's something that's worked very well in past teams that i've worked on and um, when like you're you're literally just speculating otherwise you know we might as well get some hard evidence when it's not that difficult to come across it. And a month really isn't that long of a time. Yet. Yeah. No, appreciate it. Agreed. Cool. Well, I'm looking forward to kind of seeing some of the, the outcomes or data then. Thanks. Very nice. Thank you for that. Um, EA. I'm sure Jace appreciates it. Um, Dixie, nice to have you on stage. Um, how did everything go on from your perspective for the ZK Sync launch? Hello. Um, hey. Nice to be here. Uh, yeah, ZK Sync yesterday. Um, so a little fact, this was actually the first time 
in, in across v2 that a new chain has been added uh, and i think given um given that actually things went pretty smoothly um and we actually have had a have had a retro uh internally about about how it went and one of the comments was that there was like people had a good kind of feeling about this one which is really nice so um since launch we actually haven't had uh, any identifiable issues um we obviously had a dispute uh two days ago um but uh that's um that's kind of part of the course when you're making um some, some kind of protocol level changes and basically we were monitoring things very closely um so everything's okay and yeah i think the launch has gone well and we've had i think over 200 transactions on the spoke pool on zk sync so um people are obviously using it we're up to in fact we're up to 340 so i think it's picking up a bit of traction and if i look at the transaction history it's pretty busy over there so i think that's really positive to see and obviously we're happy to be adding new destinations for people to to bridge to is that destinations plural uh Wink, wink, nudge, nudge. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we have actually, we have actually um, yeah. notified relayers that they might want to make some changes to their configuration in advance of another change that, that is coming. So I, um, I won't open my mouth too much, but I think, uh, yeah, ZK Sync is obviously not the last chain that we're going to be adding. So. so the next question I have is, uh, have you? Have you tried playing with anything on ZK Sync? I actually haven't, other than bridging. Um, I haven't actually interacted with DApps there yet. Yeah, so I've um, I've spent a lot of time playing with uh, with, with ZK Sync Block Explorer, which is not not exactly on the chain. But um, anyone who looks at ZK Sync will notice that it's not Etherscan over there. Um, but separately, I have used Argent a little bit, um, and Argent is obviously like it's it's quite interesting. It, it's it feels to me like a very di it's a very different um, user experience versus something like MetaMask because in in Argent you're kind of you're doing so much more through the through the application uh, on on your phone. Right. Um, uh, but I think it's a cool it's a good user experience um, and uh, yeah it it's it feels a bit more polished I guess although I also kind of like to see what's happening under the hood and I I can't really get that same feeling when I'm when I'm using like Argent uh, wallet on my phone. Um, sure. but yeah, I haven't, haven't done too much else like farming or anything like that or minting anything. Um, sure. so yeah. It's hard to do that when you're also building a product I've learned. <laughs> I actually, um, I, I thought when I, when I came on board here, I'll have so much time to do all this stuff. And I feel like all of that, all of those kind of like side projects and, and like little side hustles that you have have kind of faded into the background as we instead just focusing on building across. So I don't know if anyone else has that challenge, but it's definitely an issue for me. It's true. Yeah, you are a little uh, less degenerate over the last little while as work actually <laughs> picks up. I feel like in the last role that I was at, uh, like it was getting distracted by DeFi. Now that I'm in DeFi 24 seven, I'm not getting distracted by it. <laughs> yeah. Maybe but that's the most. Sorry. Go ahead. Yeah, I think like um, so. Previously, you know, you would you, if if you're doing kind of DGEN stuff, you're kind of betting on something going up, and you know, um, maybe betting on getting an airdrop allocation or something. But actually, what we're doing by building a cross, we're like betting on a cross, and that's also I think an interesting, um, just an interesting way to look at it because um, you know the bridging space is changing and and I think it's really interesting to see like how across is gaining gaining market share in different ways and of course we expect to see that increase as we start adding more chains and um, and tokens as well so so it's a bit it's it's a bit of, it's basically betting on the success of the product um, but I think it's uh, you know hopefully it's 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 energy and time well spent so right on agreed. Well, very good. Uh, I don't see any reason to draw out the call for a full-on hour since we don't have a guest this time, but we do have some time for questions or maybe I'm forgetting something, Amanda. Yeah, let's do some questions because I almost forgot about our wheel spin. We cannot forget about that. So I will quickly get the names into the wheel. Okay, and I'm going to invite Nico on stage because he has 
an important message to deliver, if I can find him, invite to speak. Nico. Good morning, everybody. How's it going? GM, says everybody. I got to start off by thanking Amanda. Um, it was so much fun to be on your space yesterday. That was great. I loved being on that panel. No response. Just leave you hanging. There. <laughs> she um, she loved really having really there. that week. <laughs> <clears throat> I wanted to just <laughs> tell everybody really quick. We're um, we're super excited. We've been long partners with you guys over at Tahoe for um, over a year now. Um, the first time we had you guys on the community call was back last year. I've got to double check the date, but um, oat collectors will know that we always give out a, a nice oat for um, having you guys on our community call. But we're just we're really excited to be in um, in this um, partnership with you. It's a really cool campaign. We are excited too, and uh, I do remember the day that uh, someone reached out and asked about integrating um, Tally Ho, as it was called at the time. Uh, and it was quite early, of course, in Across's days. I think it was the first project that reached out for a, a relationship, actually. Um, and here we are today. Yeah, yeah, and uh, it, it's amazing. I mean, you know, just in Web three time, that's. A lot has happened. <laughs> a lot of projects have have come and gone, and um, I I've got to thank you guys. I mean, I learned so much about bridging just from being a ranger. I joined your community like right away, and um, just even lurking, you know, hanging out in your community calls. They're so educational. So, um, but to the good stuff, we are uh, midstream in a campaign right now, and um, it it's really incredible if anybody wants to stop by our community call today is at 2 p.m east you can go to tahoe.xyz and um, get an official discord invite i've already um given out all my discord invites unfortunately we're trying to get caught up on that but um go to the official invite we're just you know right on stage um you don't have to do anything else but um yeah as far as the campaign is going it's literally incredible to connect with it's so easy to connect with across and for anybody getting started um you know you basically go to tahoe.xyz there'll be a handy link right on the website we i usually recommend the google chrome download but we're also uh, brave friendly as well we're not on mobile yet but um a couple quick steps you just download the extension. Um, if you've already got a wallet, you're more than welcome to import a um, a private key or a seed phrase. We've actually just released uh, private key imports. You're welcome to launch a new wallet. A um, couple of housekeeping things over in, Ta in Tahoe land, it's, it's advantageous for you to go check out our Web3 pledge and read over it and sign it. And um, of course, jump right in um there's just it's so easy to use zk sync you know you'll have to add the um, rpc yourself but you know you'll just go up to chains there'll be um some major chains that are already kind of preloaded on there polygon ethereum but at the very bottom you'll just see add um add network you'll click on that we've got a partnership with chainlink chainlink or chainlist.org just to have um, you know a third party verification of RPCs before they're added, and you don't even have to go out and dig around and you know try to find those custom RPC addresses. It's all preloaded. You'll just uh, you know do that step, add zk, and you're off to the races. And I've already bridged a little bit. Um, you know, like I said, I wanted to test out the campaign myself yesterday, so everything's working great. But if you have any questions, always just jump into our general. Um, or if you've got really specific things that you have questions about, we've got a little bug reports channel and, um, yeah, we'll be in there all day long. And, um, just a huge shout out to, um, everybody over here, you know, um, as you can see, I've got a Z kitten that I'm rocking and, uh, I'm, I'm just pretty excited about the campaign. It's really cool to be a part of it all. Thanks, Nico. <laughs> In question, anybody wants to know anything, just ask me.
And how many hours from now is your community call? It is uh, 2 p.m. East, 11 a.m. Pacific. So, hmm, how many hours is that? <laughs> Three and a half hours? It all kind of blends together. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm chuckling because I, I was trying to make it easier. Because Yeah, but it's it's never easier. We just, we need, a, we need universal time already. <laughs> yeah, yeah. All right, I have it's to. I have to jump. Great I have to jump in here, way. Clayton. You made a joke about universal time. This is like something I deeply believe is that everyone should just use UTC time. I just feel I feel yeah. insistent on saying that. Here, here. Well, <laughs> I mean, it's become the norm in DAOs, right? Um, yeah, I think it's. I think it's pretty much inevitable, actually. Um, we're we're okay. still trying to adopt the metric system in my country, so. <laughs> but no, you guys are awesome. It's just been such a cool partnership, and it's so great when I'm on our calls and I I see so many across people over there. You know, it's um, it's awesome. Well, yeah. right on. Feeling is very mutual. And by the way, and I'm looking at I've been manually putting all the names in the wheel. There's a couple of folks I. I just wanted to shout out Victor Fella and It's Me Sam. I remember you guys were winners of the Arbitrum campaign uh, post AMA Discord game. So very happy to see you guys back. Uh, the games are starting again. So maybe you didn't leave, but there were too many people in the last calls I couldn't really see. You're back on. Um, Amanda, I got to give you a digital high five. You crushed that um, Twitter space yesterday. That was incredible. Oh, thank you so much. Thanks for joining. I feel like some of the. Uh, yeah, when it gets too deep into the DeFi space, the, the combos can go on forever, right? Yeah, I mean, I got kicked off of that call four times. I think Elon was having a bad day. Um, it was it was something really weird in the Twitter API. And then we had our own Twitter space later, and it, it muted everybody like once or twice. So um, it kept you cool, and I, I really enjoyed being on that call. That was awesome. Very cool. Oh my gosh. Well, yeah, guys, see you in um, 30 minutes or a little less under 30 minutes for a Z Kitty call. Uh, I guess we can end this now with some music and a wheel spin. I'm going live with the wheel. Can everyone see the wheel? Yes. What? Smarty. Smarty, have you won before? Congratulations. Let's go. Congrats. Okay. Lovely. Well, that is, yeah, that is it. Winner. And yeah, in about 20 minutes, guys, join our Twitter space. If you want to join, it's in the announcement channel. You can win a ZKD NFT. Does the NFT farm, so the, the airdrop farming for you on ZK Sync. It's a really cool piece of NFT5. And yeah, thanks. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, everybody. I will play our closing song but I have to get our guy back in here. Thanks, there everybody. Looking forward to seeing you later today, too. Yes, thanks, Nico.